Hi folks, um, downtown Vancouver, not a fun place to drive at the best of times. Some of you asked me after the perfect 100% score I got the other day if I wouldn't mind taking it somewhere really challenging and I suggested, well, how about downtown? So here we go, I'm going to engage. Full self-driving, Beta is now live and uh, I've got you on the camera there, I've got the road on my phone and I've got the touch screen over here. So what we're going to do is once again, I'm not going to record the entire trip not the straight bits, not the easy bits. I'm going to just cut those short. But every time we get to an intersection, a stop sign, a traffic circle, uh, the changing lights on the Lionsgate Bridge, which uh, allow for traffic in both directions at different times of the day, when we get there, uh, this will be on. But once again, coming to the lights at Mountain Highway, expect it to... Um, once we get into the correct lane for going through the intersection, expect it, as we travel through it, to turn right or to glide to the right. It won't indicate because otherwise people think we're going up there, which is Mountain Highway, and we're not. Uh, we're going across the intersection where only one lane of traffic is allowed, and then it splits in two ways. We go, I believe, to the right. Here we go. Car starts moving immediately. And... Um, Yep, it just glides across to the right-hand side because it knows that we're turning right a little way down the road as we get onto Route 1. Always slows down when there is a pedestrian that looks like they might aggressively enter the road. And ahead of us, the next lights appear to be green. Oh, look at that! Cars tired of sitting behind slow-moving traffic indicated moved swiftly and uh, we'll have to see because it's got to get back in the right hand lane again for the turn off so we'll see how it does it and when it does it at some point we're going to have to get back into the right hand lane to make that freeway on ramp there we go wow very good very nice it saw that the car behind was a little hesitant indicated moved out and we're back in the correct lane for turning onto the on-ramp the weather is great and outside it's 22 degrees celsius whatever that is in fahrenheit and uh, we're um, scheduled to have up to 25 degrees so a really nice warm summery day on the left at the intersection was a model 3 as I said, this is the town where you will find Tesla vehicles all over the place. So we're going to turn right. I'm looking back. There are no bikes in the bike lane. And the car is still approaching it cautiously. And then it swings around and joins the on-ramp. And the speed will change to 80. And I'm going to put it up to 90 or 95 just because that's... Ah, now this is tricky. Everything has slowed down here. We've got a real crunch up, traffic uh, congestion. And this truck behind here is not letting us in. Not at all. And there we go. It accelerated. Oh, I like that. So it saw that it was at the end of the um, merge. It saw that there were cars behind, and it saw that one car coming up behind us was just a little bit hesitant. Really, they should be uh, yielding to incoming traffic, but they don't. This is Vancouver, North Vancouver. And now it's going left again. <laughs> oh, I love this. I love that. So we're heading toward um, Capilano turn off. So let's just push the speed up a little bit, because everyone here is going 100, at least 100. But now we move to the middle lane because we are going to have to turn. As I mentioned yesterday, this particular lane here uh, becomes the extreme right lane. This lane to my right here just merges. So Tesla is not going to take that lane because it knows it has to merge back again. At least it did that yesterday. Let's see how it does today. Lane ends in 400 meters. And so this is the merge ahead of us. And just like yesterday, uh, 
Red Dragon is keeping close to the center dotted line. That is a complete change in behavior. It always moved across to the right, occupied the middle. Oh, now we've got to... Um, ah, look at this. There's a, this van is not showing it wants to go in. Well, then Tesla says I'm accelerating. Let, let me go back and just say that again. That van on the right could easily have indicated and accelerated. Red Dragon was waiting for it to do that. It did not do that. So Red Dragon said, well, not bugger you can't say that on the air. Tesla said, sorry, if you're not going to take the opportunity, we're going to accelerate. And it did. It picked up speed, accelerated, and left that van to uh, merge behind us. But now, oh, I think if there's one thing that full self-driving does extremely well, it is allowing other cars to merge into our lane and to facilitate that. We're going to be turning off, and then we're heading left down to get to Marine Drive and then onto the bridge. So let's have a look at this and see which lane it chooses. It's indicating well in advance. And it makes the turn off. And it's going left. Look at that. I think it'll be left middle, but I, I stand corrected. It might not. So we've got two lanes here that both go left. Okay, it's going to stay in the left lane. It still has about a kilometer to go before we have to be turning right. It'll get right back to where it should be. Okay, so a nice strong turn to the left. So you can see on there that we'll have to turn right there. So in other words, we do have to move into the right lane at some point. Again, it's getting very, very good at determining for itself when to turn, when to move. On my right, Model S. So will a Tesla cut in front of a Tesla? I don't think so. The Model S is creeping up and about to pass us. Just fine. Oh, red light. As we're sitting here waiting for the lights, which has just turned green, there's been an enormous improvement on uh, update 11.4.4. I am noticing it on every drive that I take. It seems more sure-footed, more confident. Uh, the moves are smoother, but they're also assertive, which is because I have it on assertive mode, which is fine. So there it goes. Look at that. Look at that, it found the gap easily, and it moved into the right, and now we have to hit. Now, this is a little tricky. As we go around the corner, there are multiple lanes that open up, and he's worried about this woman. I, I think it's a little overly cautious if someone's walking on the sidewalk. Does it really have to slow down a lot? It does sometimes slow down more than I would think, but this is now red, green for us. The car goes in cautiously and moves across to the middle. It indicated while it did that and it moved across to the middle because these two lanes both go round and up onto the bridge that you can see over there. We're being passed by a smart. That's not good. <laughs> Here we go on this lovely round curving circuit that leads straight up onto the Lionsgate Bridge at which point, and I have the Model S on my right again, you can't see it yet, but it's just there. Now yeah, there it comes into view. This is really difficult because as we get into the Lionsgate Bridge, there's always one lane that goes in the direction you're traveling, but the other lane is traffic light controlled and will alternate between in, uh, incoming traffic to town and then outgoing traffic. And it does that, I don't know, every hour or based upon, I think, based upon uh, the um, congestion on the bridge. So here we are here with, as you can see, it's quite a congested area and there's only one green light ahead and then a red one, which means the outgoing cars, cars coming from town out, have two lanes. We only have one. And it's not likely to change yet because I can see cars in both of the outgoing lanes. So the difficulty here is 
uh, Red Dragon has to get into one single lane. And look at it now. We have one, two, three, four lanes. We have four lanes that are feeding into one lane. Hence, that's why it's so slow. But for a Red Dragon to get in, there has to be some aggressive uh, indicating and moving. I mean, the way it works here, and it normally does work like this, each car alternates. If we have these two lanes, we will merge into one first. Those two over there will merge into one. And then we have those two single lanes merging into one. And it's a little tricky for uh, Model 3 to have to negotiate that. I've never done it before with 11.4.4. And I, I think it might fail. Well, let's have a look. Red Dragon is... Oh, uh, Model S, you've got to indicate and you've got to move, buddy. You've got to do it. Uh, model 3. Um, so there, it was very awkward. It worked. It did work. Uh, and now we have... Yeah, that was awkward because the car should have just sat back a little bit. It went to the left a little bit, but that's okay. Now we have two lines of traffic. And on the right, a Model X. I told you, North Vancouver and West Vancouver and Downtown Vancouver are full of Teslas. So now the Model X has to get between the Model S and myself. And it does. Okay, that was very good. We sat back, allowed the Model X in. That was beautiful. In fact, that was pretty much perfect. I wouldn't have done it uh, any differently from that. So, so far today, zero interventions, zero disengagements. And here we are on the, uh, let's just check if that camera's working. Yes, it is. Um, and we're on the bridge. We have only one lane. And we're going right over the Lions Gate and through the winding causeway that goes through Stanley Park. On the right is the Burrard Inlet, and this is a beautiful bridge, historic bridge. So it tells us that we have 3.3 kilometers, and then we turn right into Denman. And at that point, it becomes very difficult because... Uh, cars park often in the right-hand lane along Denman and then Model 3 might well go up in the right lane and then see a blocked car and react incorrectly. Well, we'll have to see what happens there. So it's actually very bad here because the traffic almost comes to a stop. There's no reason for it uh, unless there are people turning off into the Lion, uh, sorry, into Stanley Park, in which case people do slow down for that. but. Normally, this should be 50, 60 kilometers an hour, and suddenly it speeds up. So why did it slow down? Well, I have no idea, but that's the nature of traffic. It's not computer controlled, but human controlled. So once again, if we're keeping score, zero disengagements, uh, zero interventions. I'm just sitting here twitching the steering wheel because the nag is still a feature of my full self-driving. I haven't uh, clocked enough miles for Tesla to... Um, remove it. It was a Model S. Okay, we're coming out to near the end of uh, like the, the Stanley Park Causeway and at this point here the road will weave and turn but we are getting we're into the downtown area but we're going to be turning right on Denman and um, again we'll see how it handles the number of lanes that suddenly open up because we do have traffic from the right that will merge in ahead of us so here we go speed limit 50 now so i can put it up to 55 that's good uh, it stays in this lane and as you can see here just around the corner we have traffic from the right but today there's none that's good it's going to have to move into the right lane though <laughs> i've no sooner said it than it says changing lanes to follow the route and it does. And um, on the left, a beautiful uh, Model Y. And behind me, a Model 3. So we're getting close to the Denman turnoff. Again, um, just a, a flawless drive so far. If we turn right here, and sometimes there are pedestrians just walking, but Red Dragon is super slow. He's looking, it checks, and um, yeah, you see now this could be a difficulty because we're in the right-hand lane. 
Uh, bike rentals ahead. Wearing a nice bright orange top to uh, brighten up my video. Testing the bike. I guess she works there. So now we're in the right-hand lane, but the problem is cars park in the right-hand lane. So we can get going very nicely and then suddenly be stuck. But it does say we're going to be turning in 200 meters. Uh, and the lights change. And a very, very, very civilized stop. No hard braking, no jerking, just, just like a person. I, I'm getting to say that all too often. The car is behaving just like a person. And that's the uh, ultimate goal anyway. So ahead you can see there's a white car right up ahead there that is parked and, and we still have to get past it so let's see what happens. Ah, there we go, it moved out. Oh, I like that. It anticipated that it was a parked car and now, what is it doing? It's still indicating but it's got nowhere to go. Oh, I see, it's indicating for the turn ahead. Okay, that's perfect. Oh, it missed that. Okay, that's one disengagement. It missed the turn off, and it's going to have to remap. So let's see what it does. Okay, that's... So that was a bad one. It just missed the turn off. And then suddenly it tried to turn. It started to turn, but it didn't manage to do it in time. So it just went on and uh, we turned at the next light. So I just had to wait to re-engage it. And here we go. We're now in the back rows behind um, my client's uh, apartment block. So that was good. Very good. And it sees the truck coming and it slows right down, moves across. That's good. Can't complain there. Now it turns right to get us into the front of the apartment block. Oh, I like that. It knew that that car had right of way, and even though it wasn't going very quickly, it did the polite thing and it waited. Now there's a truck parked here, somebody moving. Well, we go straight around it, and uh, it sees that there is a vehicle approaching, and then it moves across nicely. That's very good. That's, that is exactly like a person. So if it were not for the missed turn, uh, it was a perfect ride. Well, I'm going to disengage because we are here now. Ah, not a bad turning circle there. And I'll just stop here in the shade as I wrap up. So park mode. So that was... Um, it was disappointing because I don't quite know why it missed, why it quite missed that turn off. But aside from not turning where it should have, and I think again there could be a misalignment between the GPS and the map data, and the GPS that the car read for the actual position of the road. But whatever the cause, that was one strike on this trip. But for all the rest, it was literally perfect. It was. A no intervention, no disengagement, no panic drive with a single missed turn. And if that's not progress, I don't know what is. Once again, if you're off to go and buy a Tesla, and the only way to do it is to jump online, uh, if you use the referral link I've just pasted below here, you get credits, $1,000 off if you're buying an S or an X, or you get credits you can use for free supercharging or products in the store. Um, I benefit by getting credits as well. We help each other. So thanks once again for watching. I look forward to uh, seeing you in the next episode. Cheers for now.